Okay, um, we will get started. Um, for those of you who, that are new, um, welcome. This is Technical Talk, where we kind of dig in a little bit more into a specific aspect of the sarcophagus network. In this case, it's tokenomics. In the past, we've done things such as um, privacy, security, um, the actual project structure, and we had a an AMA slash technical talk on version two, version one versus version two, what's going to be changing. Um, it was a little um, kind of catch up update on what has been going on. Um, this is a, you know, this is a forum, right? You can, you can ask questions. Um, you're free to jump in at any time and ask a question. That's why we have this here um, and not on the stage because it's more of an open discussion. Um, if there is something you're wanting to know about, to speak on, to add anything to, you are free to do that. Um, I don't know if, Johnny, if, if this is uh, if you started recording yet, before I kind of jump in any further. Yep, we're good. Every, we've got a couple okay. of recorders going. Cool. Perfect. So, um, today's topic is is tokenomics, right? This is this is can be um, some people think it's directly re related to price. Um, some people say, um, you know, there's another aspect, right? The token economics, right? Is there an economy behind this token? Um, what is it used for? Most of the time, right, there is some type of utility to a token. That's why you can have a token economy. But there are other. Um, some people just use this very broadly. Um, this can, like I was saying before, or if you were here earlier, this is not directly related to price. That price isn't an aspect. Some people come in and expect that all we're going to do when it comes to tokenomics is tell me why I should invest and and hold this and let me know how high it's going to go, how price, how high the price is going to go. That is that is only a that is a small portion of this. It's an incentivized portion of this for a person using it. Um, both as an embalmer, a user, and an archaeologist, the um, second layer of encryption. We're going to get into that. We're going to explain what each piece is. Um, I'm going to go into um, depth on you know the total supply of the actual token, if it's you know the deflationary events related to it, the fees um, that the token is used for, how it's used in governance, the, um, the structure of the actual um, token when it comes to the development of it. Uh, we're going to get into some liquidity, and we're going to talk um, finally about you know, DAOs again with governance. So let's let's just get into this. First thing is this is um, this is given the information that is publicly available. This does not mean that these tokens, um, this distribution is specifically what it is. Right, a lot of these um, contracts, these vesting contracts. Um, they take time, right? The builders, it takes time. These people do not have um, the tokens immediately, and when they do, are they when they are vested, they can actually use them. I'll, I'll get a little bit more into that um, as we get there. So first off, just to talk about the actual token that is involved in the sarcophagus network, there's 100 million sar um, sarco, right? Sarco is the name of it. If you didn't know, um, there's a, there was 100 million of them uh, at the initiation of um, the sarcophagus network that 100 million was put into um, a DAO. Well, I guess technically 80 percent of that was put into the DAO, 20 percent was held for the um, builders. Those decisions were made by the DAO. We're going to get into governance a little bit, but at uh, initiation, it was they were all minted at once and those rules were put in place builders 20 percent, um, DAO 80 percent. The builders do not get those tokens immediately, right? That is over time, right? It's just something good to know. They have to wait for the their tokens to become unlocked, right? So there is, you have to become vested. Um, you are a part of the network. If, if the network doesn't do well, you obviously don't do well, right? These builders were the first ones to create this idea of Sarco. They were, you know, the first people to, to um to work through that, so that is why they had that that twenty percent, the eighty percent, which is not eighty percent anymore. The DAO initially received eighty percent of the um, tokens, right? You can see that it is now broken up into quite a few things. There were two types of incentivized farming slash mining events, right? There was a liquidity mining pool for the first year of the of the network. 
um, you could lock in a stable coin and you could get um, some tokens. This would allow, right, the, the whole reason, the whole idea for a um, the mining or the farming is to allow for people to get um, the ability to use the tokens, right? You, you have them available to the public, and if the public has them, one, they can use them in the actual, um, the, what the token is used for, or you can also go into um, trading them, right? Trading them obviously is not as, not as um, ideal as, as what it's for, but this is just, this is just initial, we'll, we'll kind of come back to the actual um, distribution, but just know, right, builders, there's an incentivized portion of this because you want uh, uh, the people who are vote, you know, when it comes to DAO, you want people to be able to use the token to use the dead man switch, right? That's the whole reason why this exists. Um, so, because that's publicly available, people can now use it. Of course, there's always the test network, but you know, to actually have people using it in, in the actual real world, um, where it's actual money that is involved, you you give them the, that incentive. Invest, investing contracts. There's two ver two types of these, right? You. Um, this went to the DAO, um, just in short, we'll get back to this. Vesting contracts are, you know, these uh, people came in, they said we are willing to give, you know, some type of stable token, right, for Tarkovkis, and in this case, USDC, um, that is actually on the DAO. You can see all of these, um, for the most part, you can see the, well, every single one of these numbers, you can see on the DAO, right? But the actual numbers, you would have to go to some of the, um, there's some tools that allow you to see all the numbers related to that. In general, the builder's number, the incentive number, the vesting contracts number, right? That is, um, that is directly on the DAO. Liquidity, um, there was a liquidity sub-DAO created, right? So the DAO created a sub-DAO to run this, um, this ability to provide liquidity to users, right? So that, that whole idea is that um, a user will always have the ability to get Sarco. If you want to use a dead man switch, you can, you can, um, there is a liquidity provided, right, from the DAO. The DAO actually gave tokens for liquidity. Normally, you see this with other, um, other networks that are not decentralized. They actually pay to have tokens listed, right? You, they can go to something like, Binance and they sell Binance. You want to, we want you to list our token. Here's hundred thousand dollars, hundred fifty thousand dollars. Here's our, here's our tokens, right? Instead, we said, well, this is as the, the community wants this as decentralized as possible. There was a vote to provide liquidity to Uniswap, and we'll get into that more later as well. Um, the DAO still contro controls most of the, um, the tokens if there's anything to, um, to decide on, it'll go through the DAO. There's a growth growth sub DAO that was just um, approved last week, right? Working on the growth of Sarco. What is the reason of Sarcophagus? Sarko it's a dead man switch. It needs to be um, it needs to be expanded to allow people to use it, right? If you're reaching out to like a legal team or a journalist, there has to be um, the community needs to kind of outreach to them. But how can you reach out to them if you don't have any type of um, if you have nothing to to work with them with, so that that growth sub DAO was just created to work on that. Um, that number has you know hasn't been solidified. Has to obviously go to the DAO, but the growth sub DAO is being created. The payroll sub DAO. Um, this is more of deciding um, users or um, other areas of sarcophagus, such as um, the you know John, uh, Johnny obviously is here. He's with DAO Academy, the payroll sub DAO allows people to um, make that vote and allow Sarco to be paid out to those those users. The sub DAO actually takes care of that. Instead of going to the DAO, the DAO is very expensive to use. The payroll sub DAOs streamline that process where people have been. Um, uh, there's about 30 people in there. Um, there are people who are originally builders, people who are very invested in in the um, network. They have the ability to say yes give the DAO Academy or yes, give um, live um, tokens to actually take care of them to continue to, to do what they do for, for the uh, network. Right, the DAO Academy is obviously very involved in the community, so that's what that's for. So payroll sub DAO actually lets people to decide that you either agree with the payment going out or you don't. 
Um, finally, the main thing of what this is for, right? Sarco is a utility token, right? We're going to get into this more. The token pays for fees. If you're an archaeologist, you're not going to want to use something where you just do it for free. It costs you time. It costs you energy. It costs you, um, you know, it does cost you money to run the service, right? So how else would a person want to do something whether to actually be compensated for that? So it takes care of those fees. Um, and there's the governance portion of this. We've talked about this multiple times. The DAO, right? You need to have, you need to own the token to be able to participate in the DAO and to participate in the governance to decide how, the direction of the network. So if you're not, if you don't own the token, you can't do that, right? You can, and with that, right, you decide the ability to change the trajectory of the network, right? Do we want to, do you want to provide liquidity or do you want everyone to fend for themselves? Do you want only, um, people who vested in the token to have it. No, people wanted liquidity, and that was done. People wanted L2s, and that was done, right? The, the community talks in the, ch the the channels, such as Discord or Telegram, and the community says, okay, well, this is what this is the direction we should go in, and it happens. The growth subdial just passed. Liquidity subdial just passed. Um, those vesting contracts obviously happened uh, quite a few months ago. Um, the LP formula mining, the... Payroll, so all that is done through the DAO, right? You, but the only way that was done, the only way it was done through the DAO is because someone held the token. Finally, something to note: there will, you know, unless the the um, unless the DAOs decide to change this, right? The sarcophagus has 100 million. However, there are deflationary events. Um, deflationary events meaning there's really one deflationary event, but it can happen multiple times. There is a slashing event that occurs when a an archaeologist multiple archaeologists um, in V2 when multiple archaeologists um, are nefariously acting and they cause a slashing event. Um, that means they, they unwrap too early, the network sees that and then it, it jacks up the, um, the reserve ratio and that, losing, that person actually has their tokens burned for doing that improperly. So just know that there are def deflationary events, right? This 100 million can actually decrease. The total amount of tokens can decrease, which is something interesting to think about when, you know, if you think about any type of fiat currency, they just print money. It devalues the currency. This one, typically, you know how many tokens are out there. Is, that is you know, publicly known, publicly available. But it can actually also decrease, which depending on if you're you know, using it, could actually increase the, um, the value based off of how much you actually you need the Sarco token to, to participate in the DMS. Um, so far, right? this is a big overview on the token, what it's here for, what it actually does, and the amount. Are there any questions on how the DAO works, on what you know, what one of these specific distributions are, such as the payroll, the DAO liquidity, the contracts, the incentives, or builders? You know, are there any questions so far? Okay, we'll just we'll just move on, right? This is um, <clears throat> I'm trying to make this as as direct as possible. There's no reason to beat around the bush, right? Everyone here is you know we're a part of the community. If 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 the value proposition of Sarco doesn't make sense, if it doesn't make sense for you to use a DMS, you won't. But for the most part, um, Sarco is just, you know, it's just lagging behind just because, lagging not in a negative sense, but in the, um, you know, kind of the best word to, to describe it is Sarcophagus is something that is catching on, right? People are using this because everyone needs a will. You need, you need to bequeath your... Um, you need to bequeath your, your holdings to someone. It may not necessarily be, you know, your death. It could just be, you know, I don't want to deal with this. Let's legally do this so no one, no one can take it and take my, um, what I hold and, and give it to someone, right? It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be crypto. It doesn't have to be cash. It can be a house or something for, for you know, a deed for a house, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be um, money. This makes it easier to do. That's why you would have a will or have some type of trust. Well, this kind of takes that that third party out of it, right? The lawyer obviously has to write it up. It costs you, depending on how much you're giving away, you know, thousands of dollars. I know people have done stuff for tens of thousands of dollars. So this is something that is is much um, much simpler in the the value it provides you, right? This is something you can just spin up in a matter of of minutes, right? Um, if you know what you're doing in a matter of seconds, but for the most part, right, in a matter of minutes, because you need to kind of understand what you're doing. Um, with that said, 
because of that, you know, this is where you start to get people who are younger to start to think about this. So as you know, the age of people in this now and cryptocurrencies get older, it's going to be your more people are going to be um, <clears throat> that wave of people is going to understand more and be able to use this. Um, so that's the, that's the first you know that's the first thing. So getting into the next um, the next step is liquidity, right? We talked about this. I just talked about this before. Liquidity subdow, right? This is a protocol owned liquidity, right? The DAO voted to provide liquidity, right? A million tokens. We want to, you know, a million tokens to be on Uniswap, right? The expectation is that Uniswap is going to hold those tokens forever, right? Unless the DAO changes that, liquidity will always be there. And it should always be there because people need to use this. How better to put liquidity on there instead of just burning cash to to put uh, tokens out on um, a centralized exchange that make it hard? You can you know if it's on a centralized exchange, you can't even use it. You can't even decide to use your Sarco to to use it properly. How much better is it than to actually have it on a decentralized exchange, get your tokens off, and be fine to use it? Right? You don't have to wait for someone to, to you know let you do that. So liquidity was provided to Uniswap, right? Um, and then there's another aspect of it that we can we can go into later, um, right? The whole point of this is to ensure liquidity for a Sarco token. You will always have the ability to get tokens. People have come in and say, "Hey, I, I you know, Uniswap is is community run essentially, right? The community provided some of their tokens. They said, "Here, trade these." Right? They provided the ETH on one side. They provided the Sarco. Said, "Here, trade these." Right? So it's important to have liquidity for people to always be able to participate in the network. So if for some reason liquidity starts to decrease, more Sarco can be put out there, right? And the plan is to eventually, you know, the, the reason why the DAO holds so much is it's a big deal to make decisions from the DAO. If, if one person was holding all the tokens, then why would you go to the DAO? You can just go to that person and tell them to do, stuff, to do something and they would do it, right? So it's important for the DAO to have tokens to be able to make these moves and make these decisions and to drive the network. So that's why it kind of has that, that amount there. Right. People who are involved in, in the liquidity sub DAO, right? They are signers who are active participants in the ecosystem. I happen to be one of the one of the signers. There are quite a few of us. It function this is a sub DAO, right? It functions exactly as a DAO, right? You just don't need to go to the main DAO. Um Aragon is there's tons of fees, it's very slow moving. Um this kind of streamlines that. However, right? You don't want to just allow one person to make the decision for the sub DAO. So there are a large amount of us, and you need at least um, at least five of seven people to make that decision, right? So why am I telling you about this liquidity sub DAO? Why is it important? Tokenomics is the entire economy of the token, right? If there is no liquidity, the token is hurt. If there is no, um, if liquidity is run, liquidity sub DAO is run poorly. It hurts the token, right? So this is stuff to keep in mind. Every aspect is important because it is a it is like a spoke in a wheel. If the spokes are broken, the token's not gonna do well. The network's not gonna do well, right? Think think about it that way. Everything is integral. Layer twos. Everyone here knows or or if you haven't used it, you should know. Ethereum is obviously it can be very volatile where the the fees can be very volatile in that you can try to create a sarcophagus or Sign a transaction and the fees will be through the roof. Right? So you, we obviously would want, as a community member, you don't want to have to you know, make a sarcophagus and say, oh my God, this cost me, it, the fees for this cost me $10, right? To pay the Sarco to the archaeologist was, was, was $10, 10 Sarco, whatever, you know, whatever your denomination is, however you see it. It cost me 10 times that to actually sign the transaction. You wouldn't want that, right? So something that was done was a bounty was created for layer twos, right? These bounties were completed. There were quite a few bounties completed for this to get um, layer two networks like Solano and Polygon and Optimism. Um, they're put on things like Sushi Swap, right? That's why these images are here. Just to explain that these are a part of that, right? A part of those bounties. And people keep asking, why isn't layer two implemented? Something that needs to be understood is this this sarcoph the sarcophagus network is not does not exist for someone to just trade tokens and try to make money. That's not why this network exists, right? Price is an important part. I will talk about that. Um, 
But the whole reason why this exists is not so that you can trade tokens just to try and gain a quick buck. Implementing layer twos takes away from the whole utility of sarcophagus. And, uh, uh, sorry, implementing them alone takes away from that. However, implementing layer twos with the sarcophagus um, actual creation, the DAP, will mean a lot more. And I'll, I'll talk about that in one moment. Let me just go through the rest of these kind of bullets and I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Right? Finally, there is like this liquidity sub DAO, right? If as layer twos become implemented with the DMS, then liquidity can also be pushed to those layer twos, right? If and Polygon actually won it went to the community. This was this was wide open in the public. The community decided that Polygon was the best one to use as a layer two. That doesn't mean the other layer twos won't be used. It just means Polygon is kind of the priority based off of the, what the community said. So let's get back to, to what that will actually mean, right? Just implementing a layer two alone only allows people to trade the token. Sarcophagus does not exist to trade a token. It is a DMS. It is a, it is, you know, everything else is kind of secondary, right? The idea is to implement a layer two within the DMS. What this means, if you have, um, if you have tokens, you don't want to pay fees. There's a way to kind of interface with the DAP to use your tokens from the layer two, right? So let's say you move to the layer two and you have you know, 100 tokens. Instead of it costing you $80, $100, 10x of what it would cost to use the fees, the layer two is implemented to use that. This is discussions that have happened in the past. People have asked why hasn't layer two been implemented from what we've seen from um, the developers that are working on V2 now. When people were asking them, they were saying, listen, we can't just, we can't just have a layer two implemented to the network just to have it. If you do want to get on those layer twos, right, because it's community run, you can do that yourself. Those networks are out there. The actual listings are out there on Polygon, right? But for them to be kind of integrated into the network, that has to be done through the network. So my, my take on this is a layer two is important, but it's more important to have it integrated in a V2. Layer two alone, I think, is, doesn't add anything to the community. Um, I think if you know anything about the DMS, just just being able to trade is is kind of you know secondary to what the actual network does. So are there any questions on that? Right, there's there's a liquidity aspect of it, liquidity being allowed to use it. Layer two, right? Think about how layer twos work. Tokens are sitting on that second layer. They really only exist there to trade, right? That 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 kind of is again. I've said it you know three times for secondary to what the network is for. Just because you can. Tr trade it doesn't mean you can't even use that in the actual network. So what's the point of having it there, right? That, that doesn't make sense. If it's on layer two, it's kind of locked in that position. So it's something to keep in mind as you understand what, what goes on with the network, right? Okay. Are there any right. questions on that? Uh, not a question, but just to kind of button up that, that idea there about the L2s. Um, something that the devs have said is, you know, aside from we want the, the, the D app to actually be on the L2, um, is once the contracts are finished for V2 and they're launched on Ethereum, then they can look at making those contracts on Polygon and Avalanche and whatnot. So it's also partially just like we're not at a phase right now where we can even like realistically launch because we have the V1 completed and we're still building V2. So once V2 is completed, then then they're definitely going to be looking at launching those contracts on the L2s so that people can use it for more menial services and cheaper things besides just like, you know, will and trust. Yeah, so it's it's important, right? It's, everyone understands it's important because of the fees, but understanding how it's implemented is more important. So when people say, oh, there's no layer twos, well, you need to understand why and what's going to go on with that, right? That, that's, that's kind of the important aspect of it. So this, this next, next slide is kind of like an all-encompassing um, portion of this, right? So we're going to go into each step and say why it's important, right? You see sarcophagus obviously in, in the middle of this image, right? Everything's around it. So the DAO, why is it, why is it important to, to have a DAO, right? If one person is deciding um, the decision of how the network moves right it's a negative right one that or you know you may think it could be a positive but if one person's in charge they get to decide network so 
if you're holding the network and they say, you know what, the network is, is garbage, you lose that. Or, or if, if they make a decision that it doesn't make sense. So now every time anyone who's holding a sarcophagus, you have to now pay $100,000 to this, this 100,000 $100, tokens to this address, right? That wouldn't make sense. Why would you do that, right? So if one person can make that decision, it's not really a good idea. Um, so that's why the where that's where the DAO comes in, where you get to make that decision, right? You get to decide the network. So what? How can a network be, you know, how can a network be um, poorly run if the community who wants it to see it survive votes poorly? Of course, that can happen, but just something to understand, right? That is a positive to allow people to to have a say in what's going on. Right? Finally, there's a, the total supply, right? 100 million Sarco. Of course, this goes out to the 16th decimal place, right? So all those 100 million Sarco, it's um, you can use 0. 0.0001 out to the 16th decimal, right? So you can, it's not a big deal how many there are, right? As much as, you know, can they be used properly? What is, what is the point of it, right? There is this deflationary aspect of it. There is a slashing event. When the archaeologists act nefarious, it will actually cause tokens to be burned, right? So that can be seen as, hey, it's important that you don't get your tokens burned, but you can see, hey, the, the less tokens they are, the more valuable they are to a user. Um, this next portion, the utility of it, going into this, right? An embalmer uses it to pay fees to an archaeologist, right? This is kind of where the price actually comes in, right? You want to set up a will. The token is one Fiat currency, whatever you want to say. It's one US dollar, it's one um, euro, it's one whatever, whatever country you're from. You need to get one Sarko, let's just say it's one Sarko equals one of those dollars, right? If you're, if you're making, if you're creating a um, sarcophagus, you want to know, like, I don't want to pay, it costs me $50 for one, let's say it costs $50 for one token. You don't want to pay $50 for one token to just have, you know, you pay $50 for a token, and then it costs you actually 20 tokens to create a sarcophagus, right? That would be insane for you. Why wouldn't you just go to a lawyer then at that point to, to create your you know, sarcophagus or create your legal requirement or go have a journalist use something else, right? There are tools out there that does things similar to sarcophagus, right? There are DMSs out there, but they're not the same. The structure is not the same, right? As an archaeologist, right, the other flip side, one, so as an embalmer, just to clear that up, as an embalmer, you don't want to pay more than you, you don't want to pay as much as the actual market is. Um, the, the positive of this is that it's not the same price as going to a lawyer, right? You're creating this yourself. You get to make those decisions. Someone's just getting paid just to say, put the legal, legal framework around it. You don't even need to, to deal with that, right? That is a positive, right? You also... But when it comes to that, you don't want to pay all those fees the same price that it would be to go to that person, right? That that positive then becomes, you know, it's not a con, it's just the same. So, you know, that, that positive is removed. That's something you think about with the network, right? This this token economy has to do with the utility of it. As an archaeologist, you don't want to create a service where it costs you money to run, um, you know, it costs you a certain amount of money to run a um, virtual machine. You don't want to get paid less than it is to run that virtual machine. It doesn't make sense to run that virtual machine then. If you're getting one Sarco and it's costing you a thousand Sarcos to run your service, it doesn't really make sense for you. And I don't know any world where it makes sense for you to do that, even if you have all the money in the world. You know, that's another story though. Right? So that is where that is where the price actually comes in. When it comes to actually creating the sarcophagus, people are talking about, you know, people always mention the trading. Oh, I want to, you know, I want a bag so I can doesn't matter. Where it matters is it should the embalmer, right? You want the market to decide that the embalmer is not going to overpay for what they're doing, and you want the archaeologist to be paid for what they're doing. There needs to be some type of incentive for you to use the network. Right? So if 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 the token goes very high, let's say Sarco goes to one hundred US dollars, right? You can use a fraction of the Sarco. Going out to the 16th decimal point allows you to break it down. So that at least that part's covered, right? Same thing for the archaeologists. If you're getting a, one token or a fraction of a token, you want to know that it's it actually can be um, used for whether you want to you know, exchange it for another token or 
help you to get through your day as you know it's it's a source of your income you want to know that 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 is there right that is to to me the only real portion of why the price comes in price is, is an indicator of that right that's not again it's secondary secondary to the actual dms right there's something to keep in mind right there's a dow there's a total supply there's utility then there's the development structure if you don't know what is being developed if you don't have a say with the dow on what is being developed the network could just just be you know honeypot right? taking your money and never actually do that it knows all your information you want to know you can trust it that's why the team they test publicly the information is available publicly i mean I, I'm, you know, people have asked me if I'm if I'm a builder. No, I'm actually a community member that just kind of fell into this, went down the rabbit hole, and understood this. That's why I'm asking questions. I want to understand. That's why these, this, you know, this technical talk exists. This information needs to be public. People need to know that you can get this information, and who better than someone who's involved in the community to actually be able to, to help you and explain. So, the team um, at Decent Dow. Very public, very transparent. There was a talk on the 16th. Um, Johnny was also a part of that, um, describing what is going on, what what's coming up. You know, te testing will be happening, right? You will be able to see that, right? And there's a refining and innovating part. One from v the V1 to V2 discussion was brought to the DAO, right? Why why is that a why is V2 better than V1? Well, they're refining on what went well. And instead of just having one single point of failure for an archaeologist, there are now multiple. You get to decide how strong um, the encryption is on the second part and how many shards are created, right? That's important to see. It is important to have this information out there or you're just, you know, you're, you're just hoping for the best, which is not a good idea. We talked about liquidity before. Um, if there is no token supply, you cannot trade. Um, you cannot trade to get the tokens. If you don't have the tokens, you can't use the DMS, right? That's a simple fact. And what better way to control it than to have the DAO decide where the liquidity goes to allow people to have that. Don't want to put this on a centralized exchange where once tokens are there, they're out of your hands. It's better to go directly to the source to get that those tokens. Right? That's something to keep in mind. I mentioned this earlier. Johnny mentioned this as well. The community involvement. If these talks don't happen, no one knows what's going on. Right? Besides going to the Discord, besides going to the Telegram, besides going to D work, besides going to you know specific areas, you have to go to specific areas to kind of figure that. You have to do all that work yourself. Well, something like this kind of stemmed from an idea I have. I know it was overwhelming to figure out what was going on, unless you're you know kind of always combing the, the networks. So those the community has asked for. Something like these technical talks, something like the public discussions that are being had, right? You don't have to be here 24 7 to monitor this. Yes, it's, you know, it, you can be here for more than, you know, to be here a couple minutes a day, but it's nice to have this um, catered to you. I know I, I wanted this. I'm kind of always on here. Johnny's always on here. We have quite a few people that are in the community that are always on talking whether it's in the general chat or the project chat or the technical discussions chat or the growth sub dow chat right there's kind of so many conversations going on it's hard to keep your your ear to the ground so i said this would be something good to have right i wish i had this so since i'm i'm here why not you know help people out to get more involved in the community and this is a, this is a good point to do that um i know I'm, I'm talking a lot we're almost done with kind of with the slides but anyone can can jump in and ask questions at any time there's there's no uh it's open to that. But if there's no questions, you know, I'll go to the, the next thing. There were vesting contracts. There are um, people that were so um, thought that Sarko had such a, a big kind of influence on what's going to happen in the future that they wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to get in on the um, on these on sarcophagus. They they provided funds in stable tokens. To be able to hold um, Sarco, right? That is publicly available. But these people had to come to Sarcophagus and place that contract on the DAO, right? This is not, this, again, this goes back to being public and transparent. This does not occur without the community saying yes, right? This doesn't happen. That's, that's very important. These people had to come to 
DAO, create a, a smart contract, get this to go through, and then actually have the hope that community voted on it. These discussions happened over a long period of time, but you know that's important. That's important when it comes to the token economy. And I'll wrap this up after after this piece. I'll kind of put everything together, right? Finally, there is a necessary use case. If you are a utility token, there are millions of utilities. Well, not millions, but there are thousands of utility tokens, right? A lot of them exist for the same exact reason, right? There are. I'm not going to tell you there's not other DMS tokens, right? However. A utility token should exist for a necessary use case. In this case, it's it's an, it's encrypted, right? It's a two. First off, it's a two-party succession plan, right? You don't need. Well, technically, it could it could be three parties, but for the most part, you create a, a file, and if something happens to you, it goes to your successor. It could be journalism. It could be password manager. It could be legal document. Whatever. That use case. Right? The succession plan is, is necessary, but to make sure no one takes your information, you encrypt it, right? The necessary use case is kind of encapsulated by that. So to go through all this, every single aspect of the economy is important. How are decisions made, right? Is it one person doing it, right? Is, is, you know, is that what's going on? Um, you know, tokenomics is, is broad and anything can impact the value. And that doesn't mean necessarily mean price. That means the value of the token. It's, price is you know, a part of that, but it's not the only thing. Is there a logical use for this token? We already said that. There's a, there is a necessary use case. You want to have a, someone to get your belongings after. There's a succession plan. Right? Is this information publicly available? Can, can someone who's just off the street figure, see all this information? Yes, you can. It may be a little hard because the token's further along now. But this information, like the DAO and the total supply and the utility of it and the development structure, development structure, you know, you can see, you have to see with your eyes, but the DAO, the supply, utility, um, the liquidity, um, the use case, that is all should be inherent by now, right? You can just look at this token, you can see that information is there. I mean, like the development structure, you actually have to see the developers interact with the community to understand that. Same thing with the support, you have to, see, you have to be involved in the community to understand that, right? So, um, the, the next thing is, right, do you know what the, how the development process is? Is it public? Is the network growing? Well, that's where the, you know, the growth DAO comes in, right? That's something that's important. Instead of just going after, like, it's, it's been the community who's found this has been involved. But it, it's important to get, you know, journalists involved. Here's a tool for you. We want you to use it. Because, and the reason why it is, the more people that are using the token, the stronger the network becomes, right? With archaeologists, with embalmers, you can't kind of, you can, you can grow the network that way. And it's important to reach out to them because they're not going to necessarily know how to use this. Sarcophagus, the DAP, right, is more for people who are a little bit more um, intellectually um, aware of this network, right? There will be an SDK, a developer's kit where someone like a journalist will create a front end to make it easier for you to use. You tap into the sarcophagus network. You don't have to use the actual, you don't have to directly use the DAP off the website. You'll just have a front end for a user saying, I want to encrypt this. The network takes care of everything else on the back end, right? That's something that's going on with the community. But you need to let people know this exists and to kind of help them through it initially to get the ball rolling. That's where the growth dub, so the growth sub DAO comes in, right? right? The community also needs to be strong. If you're not involved, if you don't help people to get involved or help the, to give them a starting point or more information, you may not necessarily know, one, where to begin, or two, if you can even do anything. If the network or the community is shut off, you're going to come in and just say, hi, I like the token, and then you figure out what to, how to use it yourself. That's why the community needs to be strong and needs, needs to get everyone involved. Right? Um, is there an incentive to be a part of the network? This is... Like I said, this is where the price comes in, along with actually creating the sarcophagus. The price comes in if you're an archaeologist. What, what incentivizes you to use it? You need to make sure that you're compensated to have your service actually running. Right? That's where the price comes in. The other portion is, is there an incentive for you to use it? Is it more expensive than setting up legal documents? Is it cheaper than setting up legal documents? Is it, um, 
is it easy to use? Is it hard to use? Right? If there's incentives that if there are roadblocks, there's reasons that are going to be stopping you. Right? These are things to think about when you think about the this, this whole um, the actual Sarco token. Does it exist in, in an area to flourish? And if these things are broken, they, they can't flourish. So having the DAO, where everyone makes the decision, having the total f supply, right? It's, you know, some people could say it could be higher. Some people could say it could be lower. To me, total supply is not as big of a deal as are there deflationary or inflationary events. In this case, there are deflationary events. So the number will actually decrease, right? Typically, if there are less of something, the value will increase. So set with price or the utility of it. Is is the utility is there's a governance part of it and it pays for fees, right? That's important. If there's an archivist not getting paid, they're not gonna want to use it. If um if you can have um if there's an aspect of holding it where you can actually decide with the DAO now, then there's an important portion of it. Development structure is important because you want to know where the network is going if you have a say and see what's going on how can you make this better those discussions are happening publicly liquidity you want to get the tokens support if it's not strong you're not going to use the token you don't want to be involved um and you're going to see it's kind of um we are very tribal beings if you see other people using it and saying it's it's a good idea you're going to be more likely to look at it and understand what's going on and of course it's necessary we're going to need this so in general, right, this economy is based off many things, things that everyone who's here can be a part of, things that you can see. And if something is not going right, you or you don't believe it's going right, you can say something. You should say something, because that's the whole reason why this can exist. And that's that's a part of this community involvement, right? That's why you, you take place in the DAO, where the token supply matters and the utility of the token matters, right? There's a lot going on here. But I've been talking for a while saying why each portion is important. But getting down to the value of the token, if any single one of these is going astray, like the DAO just controls liquidity, you can't get your tokens, it's a problem. If you don't know how the, the token is developing, it's a problem. If the utility goes away and there's and it's not being used as a fee in the DMS, it goes away. That's an important part of when this goes to layer twos. If you go to layer twos, Right, or if you go to another token network, like let's say you allow people to use like Tezos for whatever reason, you can use Tezos on sarcophagus. That takes away from having this Sarco token, right? If you can use Tezos to vote in the governance, if you can use you know Bitcoin or ETT or whatever token you use, if you can use those tokens in this, it takes away from the value associated with this token. You don't need Sarco anymore. You can just use something else, right? That takes away from that's that's important to understand, right? Um, can tokens be created out of thin air, right? Yes or no, right? Those are important questions to ask, and you need to know why. That's kind of where this token economy exists. Everything feeds each other, right? That's why it's this this circle, right? There's the DAO, there's the community, there's the, the developers, there's the actual token, there's the actual creating sarcophagus, there's a network where you can get it, there's bounties, and there's this distribution, right? Everything is intertwined. And you can mess up this this. I mentioned before these spokes. You can break a spoke on this bike. Breaking one, yeah, it hurts the network. It's not going to be the end of it. But if you break a couple, then the network is going to it's going to crash and burn. There's going to be no reason for you to use this, right? So that's kind of where each portion of this actually is important. I know this is kind of this discussion has been things that you may already know, but I think it's things that are important to kind of highlight because they are. They are important. If there was no utility for this token, you wouldn't use it. If the total supply was infinite, then you know there'd be no reason for an archaeologist to be. If you didn't get to make the decisions, you're you could be rug pulled at any any day. Um, if there's no liquidity, you can't trade the token. If there's no support, no one knows about the network. If there's no use case, no reason to have a network. Right. Every single one of these is important for the survival and and you know the expansion of the network. So I know I talked a lot, right? It may not have been as um, focused on the economics part, but economics, you need to understand, is the study of the economy, right? So it's not just price. It is more than that. So are there any questions related to any single one of these, to the DAO, to the total supply, to the utility, to L2s, to the community support, or how these vesting contracts actually were created, to the... Um, succession plan that is the DMS, right? Are there any questions related to that?
Okay. So so I know that um there is the possibility that people are, you know, they want to ask questions but maybe not here. You want to get something kind of in writing to understand how any of these networks work. Feel free to reach out, feel free to message um DJ Coro actually helped me out with this. These technical talks are not uh, meant to just be just me hosting it. Um, I put this out there to have it, like I said, as an open forum, as an open discussion. Um, only um, Johnny and um, Migs have actually taken me up on being a part of these discussions. Um, I would like the community to be involved, right? This is this gives people the ability to you want to take part of the network. Here, here's an opportunity to do that. There, there are the bounties that are created on Dwork that allow you to do that, right? I know I didn't talk about Dwork too much, but that is a bounty program that is actually launched to allow people to be part of the community in, in ways that maybe you don't have to, you don't want to talk to people, or you just want to, you know, play a role and kind of do a little portion of it. That's that's one way. We obviously have these technical talks where someone can actually run this. It's not meant to just be me. I actually don't want it to just be me. I want someone else to be involved in this because it's important to to grow. If you're always seeing the same person, you know, you just think that okay, that's just something they do. Um, but you know, that is, that is something we'll get into. It will be discussed. We will, you know, keep pushing that in the announcements and in general tab. But um, if there are any questions related to getting involved in technical talks or the community, or questions about this talk today, feel free to reach out. Um, this video will be posted. Johnny has been uh, recording this. It will get posted as well. These slides have been posted already to the general chat. Um, we will also reach out to everyone um, once the video is up. So if there are no questions, have a great day, everyone. Um, thank you for coming to the talk. Um, this is an important pa um, aspect of the network, so it is, it is nice to get a chance to actually discuss this. But yeah, you make a good point, Johnny. I, I do think that's a good idea that we can we can kind of write these up and and explain them to to others um, to have them kind of translated. Um, we can we can reach out to in the general chat actually now to do that. But okay. Other than that, thank you everyone for for coming to the talk. Um, and we will see you on the next one. The next vote will come up.